Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. This is our last episode of HDR Effects Pro 2 by Nick Software. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to use it as a Photoshop plugin. You can see I have Photoshop open, and really the challenge is you need to get your bracketed set of images into Photoshop. And it's done in a way that's not super common. To do it, go up to the top file menu, then go down to automate. And in that automate menu, you'll notice down part way, you'll see merge to HDR effects pro two. Click on that. Once you do HDR effects pro two opens and this source files dialog box opens up. This allows us to find our bracketed set of images and load them into HDR effects pro two. So we're going to click open. And I have them on my desktop right here. It's a set of three Nikon RAW files. So I'm going to click those three files. And I'm going to click Open. Now we have one choice here, Create Smart Object. If you have this check like I do, what will happen is after HDR Effects Pro 2 creates our HDR image, it will open up in Photoshop as a smart object. A smart object will allow you to go back into HDR Effects Pro 2 and re-edit anything. So even if you picked a preset in HDR Effects Pro 2 and then go back into Photoshop with your merged image, you could go back into HDR Effects Pro 2 and pick a different preset if you'd like. So it allows you to go in and re-edit pretty much everything. If you don't have this checked, it will open up your merged image into Photoshop, but you will not be able to go back in and re-edit anything. So I'm going to leave that checked and I'll demonstrate how you could re-edit when the time comes. And we're going to click Merge Dialog. Now what it's doing now, it's taking those three images and it's loading them into HDR Effects Pro 2. And once they're loaded, it's going to come up with that other dialog box that we're more familiar with probably that allows us to align the images, get rid of any ghosting and chromatic aberration. This box here. Now you can see I have this set of three bracketed images. Uh, there's one that's two stops underexposed and another one that's two stops overexposed. And of course the one in the middle is the one that's supposedly properly exposed. Now, I did shoot on a tripod, but I did notice this darker image, the one that's two stops underexposed, is off a little compared to the other two. I must have bumped the tripod during this exposure. So I'm going to keep alignment on. Now there's nothing moving in the image. I did bump the tripod, but it wasn't, there was nothing moving during the exposure. Uh, so I'm going to unclick ghost reduction. So if you have a scene and there's a breeze outside and trees are moving or someone's walking through the scene between your exposures, click ghost reduction. And I found usually around 40% works well for most moderately breezy days. If it's more breezy, click more. If it's less, click less. In this case, I'm not going to check it at all. 
and I'm going to check chromatic aberration. Now I did cover this in one of the previous videos in more detail in case you're wondering. So we'll leave this choices and I'm going to, going to create HDR. Now it's going to do what it normally does. It's going to open up an, uh, a merged image in HDRFX Pro 2 and it's going to allow us to edit it. And as per usual, it will pick this first preset, this default preset, and give us a look at the image. And you can see, you know, it's pretty grungy looking, right? So typically what I do is, as I mentioned many times, I go through the presets and see if there's anything in the presets I like that kind of gives me a look that I want. So I'll just keep going through and see what I like. Okay, I kind of like structured one, but it's a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to go to the right. Now I did cover all the controls in a previous video. So if you're just tuning in, uh, go to the playlist for this series of images or series of videos, I'm sorry. And excuse me, you'll notice in one of the previous videos, I go into great detail about every, all these adjustments here. So I'm going to go to the color uh, part and I'm going to pull saturation down. It's just a little bit too saturated. And I kind of like the rest of the grunge. So we'll just leave it at that. And I'm going to click OK. So we're going down here in the lower hit, uh, right hand corner and I'm going to click this OK button. So it's going to create our merged image now and it's going to open up in Photoshop as a smart object. Remember I mentioned that um, if you have that one checkbox checked in that first dialog box that appears, the smart object will allow you to go back in and re-edit it. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So here's our image in Photoshop. Now we could do, you know, editing in Photoshop too. We could do, you know, any adjustment layers to it or anything we like or add a different type of filter to it or something like that. But You'll notice it's a smart object and right here where it says HDR Effects Pro 2, if you just double click on that, you'll see that it will open up in HDR Effects Pro 2 again and it will allow us to re-edit it. So you can see there's our image and you know, you remember I turned saturation down. All of our adjustments are exactly the same. I could come back in here and adjust readjust anything I'd like. Now I'm going to cancel out of here. I just want to show you one more thing. Um, you may notice when you're poking around in Photoshop, if you go up to the top filter menu and you go down to the Nick collection, you'll notice that HDR Effects Pro 2 is there as well. That is to use it as a filter on a layer. So a filter layer. It doesn't really allow you to bring in your bracketed set of images like we just did. But sometimes it's pretty cool to add that HDR look to a single image. So I'm going to do that for uh, this video also. I'm going to do an, I'm going to open a new image. So I'm clicking on open and you can see I have a folder here called single and I have a Fuji raw file there and I'm going to click open. And this is again, a, a totally unprocessed file. You could see it opened up in Adobe Camera Raw because it is a raw file and no adjustments were done to it at all. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to click open image down here and it will open now the image up in Photoshop. Now I'm going to use HDR Effects Pro 2 as a filter. So I'm going to go up to filter, down to Nick Collection, then down to HDR Effects Pro 2. We're going to click on that and it will then take this single image and it will apply all these adjustments to it. I could pick a preset. I could then, you know, manually adjust things. And as you see there, it picked this first, of course, default uh, adjustment. You could look at them, see what balance looks like. Detail, don't like that. Structured, that's pretty HDR looking. But let's go with that just for the heck of it. And uh, I'm going to change it a little though. I'm going to turn exposure up a touch. And maybe I'll just bring structure down a touch. Okay. And we'll click OK. So what it will do now, it's going to apply those adjustments as a filter 
to that layer. And I only had the one layer there. And there we are. Now I can't go in and readjust anything. But if I would have created a smart object first or a smart layer, then I would have been able to do that. And you know what? Since the video isn't very long, why don't we do that? So I'm going to go back up to history and we're going to go to open. So this is our unadjusted image. We're back to the beginning. I am going to right click on here and I'm going to go to convert to smart object. So it's now going to be a smart object. You can see it has this little square in the corner, so it's a smart object. Now I'll go up to Filter, Nick Collection, and I'll go down to HDR Effects Pro 2. And it's going to again open up the image. And I'll pick that same preset and do the same type of thing. What was it? Structured or something I picked? And once it does it, there's our image. And I think it might have been that one or that one. No, it was definitely that one. And we're going to go to exposure and turn that up a little bit. And we'll go to structure and bring that down a little bit. And there's our image. We're going to click OK. And it's now saving it. But now because it was a smart layer or a smart object, I'll be able to go back in and readjust it. And now there's our image. And then you can see we have the smart filter. We'll just double click where it says HDR Effects Pro 2 and it will allow us to come back in and readjust anything and everything we want. So once it opens, you'll remember I turned exposure up last and I had um, structure down a little bit. Bring that up a little bit. Maybe I'll go to finishing and I'll bring the vignette down like that. How's that look? So we'll click OK. And again, it's going to save the image, open up into Photoshop. And there we are. There's our readjusted image. Now I could save this as a Photoshop file. We'll go up to File, Save. And it's going to have this um, PSD ending and it has the same beginning. Um, I'll just call it, um, this was the, oops, Japanese garden. And I'll save it to that same folder. So it's saved as a Photoshop file now. So I could reopen it and it will again still have this smart filter here and I could readjust it if I'd like to. But if I'd like to save it as something I could share online, like a JPEG, I could go to save as. Another way to do it, and probably a better way, is to go to Export As, and then you'll get this dialog box, and this will allow you to pick different file formats. I'll pick JPEG, and you could change the size if you'd like. I'll just leave it full size right now. And with those settings, and we'll go to Export, and it's going to ask us where, and I'll do it in that same folder. And there, it is saved. So that's how you use HDR Effects Pro 2 as a Photoshop plugin, two different ways. One way is to bring in a bracketed set of images, and another way is to use it as a filter on a single layer. In this case, that single layer was just one image, and I showed you how you could then use HDR Effects Pro 2 as that filter. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.